Well, I've been oddly inspired today by a Zen Buddhist poet uh, by the last name Han Chan. Uh, someone sent me a YouTube video uh, today of a nun reading his poetry. And uh, it was quite a long video, but I was sitting there because it's, it's being read as poetry for meditation. And so I was sitting there listening to it, you know, contemplating the lines as they came. And one of the lines was, the lost traveler looks in vain for the sky. And I, I don't really know why that line just stuck in my head and uh, insisted on attention, really, is what it felt like. It just really hit me, and I've been ruminating on it uh, this afternoon. And I'm hoping I can share some of the things that I've thought about it, uh, although they came at different times and from different angles. I'm not sure I have it all well thought out. But this idea, the lost traveler, okay, so somebody who's looking for directions, looking to find their way to a certain destination, and he looks in vain for the sky, going to the, trying to look for the sky, because the sky is relative, is it not? I mean, from every vantage point on the planet, it's up. And yet, that can be in opposite directions if you're standing on two different sides of the planet. And so that brings to mind this idea of relative knowledge, Knowledge that is only true given certain circumstances. The directions are one of them. Japan is to the east, and, you know, New York is to the... Nope. Well, you see, I'm running into it right there, because Japan can be to the east, and it can also be to the west. I was going to use two different ones, but I made a mistake and talked myself into a circle there, so... <laughs> This idea, though, of relative knowledge, that you can't find where you need to go in spiritual life with the use of relative knowledge, because relative knowledge is not always true. And it's one of the fundamental uh, rules about how we identify ourselves. Uh, the rule in the Vedanta is that if it changes, it's unreal. The unchanging alone is real. And I think I've talked in the past in one of these vlogs about the only thing that doesn't change is the, the watcher within you. That which has been you, whether you were a, a single-celled, yet-to-be-developed organism, or your 58-year-old male self. Those things are all based on relative knowledge. I'm 58, I'm a male, you know, I, I'm an American, uh, I'm of this ethnicity, of that sexuality. All of these things are relative knowledge. They're not useful. Uh, for answering the question, who am I? Because they are only true at different points in your life and not always. And so if you're a traveler who's lost and you're looking to find your direction, you need to find within yourself that which is unchanging, that peace and one and only piece of knowledge that is not relative. You see, if this whole world were relative, we could know nothing. Uh, because everything would depend on something else for its truth. And when you come up with your first truth, when there's no other truth, what can it depend on? Right? And so that's the question. Who are you when nothing else is true, when nothing else is telling you what you are? That is direct knowledge as opposed to relative knowledge. And all everything you learn in school, everything the world can teach you, is relative knowledge, dependent on some other piece of information. But that one answer to the question, who are you, depends on the unchanging absolute, which is simply, I exist, I am. And from there, we enlighten ourselves.